The following program contains mature subject matter. Listener discretion is advised. Taking a relationship to the next level. This is Passion with Dr. Lori. Welcome to Passion, a show about love, sex, and relationships. Tonight on the program, Dating Dilemmas, last Wednesday of every month. Can't believe it's the end of the month already. Uh, and uh, we focus on dating, dating dilemmas. My two panelists sitting here in flip-flop shorts, like, it is end of October, almost Halloween. Who would have thunk it? Um, so uh, we focus on dating tonight. That's uh, We answer your questions, any dating questions you have. We have uh, Frank Kermit. He's a dating coach. He's the author of many books. Uh, uh, his website is franktalks.com. We have Fritz Gerald Morisot. He's the founder and president of Elite Speed Dating. So if you have speed dating questions, he can answer them as well. He's been around the dating scene for quite a number of years. You were like right on the be- at the beginning of the speed dating uh, movement. Yes. Uh, you got right on top. Like it's you got there. right in there, right at the beginning. And I remember meeting you many moons ago at the Salon de l'Amour where you had a, a booth, but nobody had heard really about speed dating at that time. So I think that was, you were trying yes. to letting, let people know this is what it's about. So that's where uh, I met Fritz. And of course, Frank has been doing our show now for uh, probably close to eight years eight already. Years. Yeah, eight years of, of doing this segment regularly. and 87. This is our 87th Dating Dilemmas. Oh, wow. See? We, and I think it's my close to my 4,500th show or something <laughs> like that, if we're going to count anyway. But, well, we won't. Uh, so uh, your questions tonight, 514-800. You can call in, of course, at 514-790-0800. Frank wrote a very interesting um, article. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the article, but I read it and I thought, oh, this would be a really good topic. Someone sent me the question. I had a really great first date. Everything was going well. We even kissed. We made out. Uh, We made plans to see each other again. And the next day or two, uh, he gets a text, an email saying, look, I just didn't feel it. Uh, I don't think we're compatible and I don't want to see you again. Right. And that's not actually go have been been ghosted. Ghosted would mean which Just happens no contact. right, no contact after a great first date, which happens a lot apparently. Yeah. So that's yes. another thing. So at least this person got something that says I didn't feel it, which is interesting because he felt it. He right? felt it, and he says, "Look, all the signs were there. The way she looked at me, the way she touched me, the way uh, you know we made plans again. Like what happened?" So I started to go over, you know, the last 15 years of coaching, just coming up with all these potential reasons, coming up with more reasons and more reasons. And then I decided, let me write an article about this 25 reasons later. Right. Of why people. Of of all the different reasons that I've come across in coaching uh, from the client base of why people will be really into it on the first date and never make it to the second date. I got to say that, you know, uh, like reading that article, like many of them, I, I, many of those reasons I said, okay, I, I've never really heard any of those or they, none of them would have applied to me if I had decided to do that. Um, however, we often assume what did I do, right? What did yes. I do wrong? Did, was it me? Could I have done something different? Like, did I misread the signals? Like, what happened? Right? Well, that's actually a good question to ask, because unless you take some time to do a little bit of soul searching and, and examination of yourself, if you are making a mistake, if you are pushing someone away, that is the question you need to ask in order to solve that problem. You have to look at, was I doing anything that might have pushed the person away? Okay. I had this conversation with somebody. I, I told them that we were going to do this topic and... And she said that it has happened, that the chemistry was good, everything was good, but there was one thing that turned her off, like bad breath, for mm-hmm. example. And that was enough to, for her to say, oh, my God, I, I can't, I can't, I, I just can't see this guy again because I, I, it w-. And she felt she couldn't tell, you know, she says, what do I say? I, I tell him, sorry, your breath stinks, I can't, I can't go out with you. Like, you just don't do that. She didn't want, she never wanted to be that forward, that mean, that, you know, and it, and she didn't find it a valid, really a valid reason, but it was enough to turn her off. So it was enough to ghost the other person. 
I want to hear from our listeners, like, what were your reasons for ghosting someone? Or if you've ever had a really great first date, but then decided that you weren't going to take it any further, why, like, why not, right? What, what are your reasons for that? 514-800. I was speaking to another young woman who was telling me that she went on a date. Everything was nice. And I, and from how she described the way the date went, my guess was that he thought it went great. And then he said, oh, I hope we can see each other again. And she said, I, you know, I didn't, I don't really want to see him. I found him a bit boring and everything. But I said, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. We'll get together. Because she didn't know how to say, like, not interested. And I said, well, well why don't you tell him the truth? And what are you going to do after that? She says, well, I'm, when he asks me, I'm just not going to be available. I said, well, so he gets the message that the date went really well. It didn't go well. You know, so there's all this, I don't know. Miscommunication. Mis- yeah, tons of that. Miscommunication. Well I, don't, well, I don't know if it's miscommunication. Miscommunication means uh, you were wanting to communicate one thing and the person misunderstood. This is misleading. This isn't just miscommunication. She she led him on because she didn't want to deal with a very adult and mature conversation. So leading somebody on, meaning saying yes, yeah, sure, I'll get together with yes. you again. When in fact that's not that was not her intention. Exactly. But I think this is part of a problem we have in the way we sometimes socialize. Yeah, I mean it's not a bad thing. It's like we teach people to be kind, respectful. Like you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. So you. This is the reason why it's not, you don't purposely, um, you don't purposely mislead. You're trying to protect somebody's feelings. You just end up misleading them by protecting their feelings. I don't know which is worse. It's like, we have to kind of, let's ask that question because would you rather be misled? Like, would you, you know, would you want your feelings hurt? I think you, I think you would because end result, you're still going to get your feelings hurt, whether it happens up front or it happens later and i would argue that it hurts more after when you're ghosted as opposed to they tell you i'm not feeling it even if it's just you know it's not gonna work out it's not you it's me right it's whatever but, what, but how excuse. come you didn't show it but how come how but the date went so well and we made out and we had chemistry what do you mean you're not what do you mean you're not feeling it you felt it then I get, I'm not feeling it now in the stage in my life. I'm not where I want to be. But you were there yada, yesterday. Yada, 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 Why yada, aren't yada. you there today? I thought that I was. I changed <laughs> my mind. You see, think, these are the kinds of conversations people want to avoid. <laughs> yes, I and, and I agree. But yet I do believe that that conversation is much better than not saying anything. Mm. And then you meet them again somewhere and, yeah. and there's no response why didn't you say anything why no closure zero um, i want to hear from you if you've ghosted somebody what was your reason we're trying to illuminate a little bit and and maybe even give people a chance to have closure by by saying look it's not it's not necessarily about you but why would you ghost somebody? Why do you stop even though there's chemistry? I get it if there's no chemistry or the, the date didn't go well. But when the date does go well, I really want to hear your thoughts. Uh, I saw a couple of texts. One says men do this all the time. I think women do it too. I don't think oh, yeah. it's a man thing. I actually think in my perspective, I think women do it more than men. Well, I think women might mislead more. I think men might ghost more. I think it's a little bit different. They might women might disappear after they say, "Sure, sure, sure, I'll see you," which is a bit more misleading. That's not ghosting. Yeah, it's ghosting in a way, but it's just maybe there's a little bit, you know, a little bit different. But, but I think men too don't want to be don't want to hurt somebody's feelings either. Like, come agreed. On, you know, uh, I only ghost somebody if I find a sign she's possibly pardon the term crazy. Example: She says in a blog post online that she'll wait years to get revenge on somebody over an old grudge. Yeah, sometimes Red doing flag. the research, sometimes yeah. um, actually Googling somebody or looking, checking their stuff out on Facebook gives you a certainly a window into their the way of thinking. So it, you might have had a good first date and then realize, um, you know, that, oh, whoa, 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 wait a second. I just read her post and that's not, uh, you know, that's not good. Uh, so what, you know, what are your reasons for ghosting someone? Because it sounds like everybody's done it at some point. We'd love to hear your thoughts. 514-800. The latest trends and hottest topics, love and sex, handled honestly and with passion. Here's Dr. Lori, CJAD 800. Listen, 
cleansing my soul of addiction for now Cause I'm falling apart Yep, attention here we go. Uh, dating dilemmas tonight on the program. Sorry, Dave, like he's signaling to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got to get on the ball. Uh, all right. Dating dilemmas. Uh, Fritz Gerald Moriso of EliteSpeedDating.com is here. Frank Kermit, uh, dating coach, is here with us. We're talking about ghosting. Why? Why do people do this? We need answers. When we are ghosted, it is a horrible feeling. It's only like when a date goes well, when, when we get the feeling, oh, that went really well and you know, told me we made plans to get together again or said he would call me or she would call me. And and then nothing, dead silence. Like, what happened? Everybody has asked themselves that question. What happened? Like, I don't get it. It's so confusing. So I'm putting it out there. Um, Frank wrote an article about it. I'm not going to, you know, we'll see what other people have to say, but I'm sure they fit with a lot of the things you wrote in your article about the 25 reasons why people will ghost you after a good date. But I want to hear from our listeners as well. 514-800. Sometimes it's just a feeling, this texter says, and you can't explain it. End result is an awkward conversation anyway. Zero desire to put anyone through that. And quite frankly, if he didn't like me, I really don't care to know why. We need to grow up and stop being so needy. The world doesn't owe our fragile egos an explanation because we made out with someone and they didn't feel it. Move on from Sandy. So, well, it's kind of well said. Well said, Sandy. Well, said. well, I, you know? I, well said, Sandy. I, I, you have a you have I issue actually, with this. Eh? I do. I have a very. I have an issue with the whole ghosting in general. I I think that. Well, most of us have an I, issue with it, Fritz. It's not like we all like it. I agreed, okay. agreed, but I don't think that it, I'm gonna just gonna flat out say it. I think I'm old school. My okay. mama raised me to answer back to people. I do not believe that there is any valid excuse to not answer back to someone, especially if you went on a date and if you didn't feel it, you say you I didn't, didn't feel, feel it. it. You will have much if you're in a relationship conversations will come a lot more difficult than you didn't feel a kiss or so and so so you have to be able to express yourself you didn't like it say it Mm. Uh, yeah to follow up on what fritz said if you can't have difficult conversations when you're in the dating stage what makes you think that when you get into a serious relationship all of a sudden those conversational skills will manifest they won't. I mean, I prefer honesty too. Like it would be a preference, but I can understand people who hold back because I'm, they don't want to hurt or whatever. I want to make a very clear point, okay? Because I was that guy who sometimes screwed up, came across creepy. I went from the being a loser to a seducer. Here's one of my experiences. Once I figured out how to address a woman's emotional needs, and I ended up on that other side of the canyon, the women who initially would reject me, finally felt comfortable enough to tell me what I did wrong. Oh, that's good. Here's the problem, though. If they had told me that from the very beginning, I would have known. I would have known where to start, what it right. is I'm doing wrong, instead right. of having to take that three-year journey. So we should be we should be okay to give feedback. Yes. Uh, so, well, this texter says, what happened? Who cares? Don't waste time. Move on. So don't what? bother. Don't, you know, just move on. No, that's, uh, sorry, I disagree. And okay. here's why. You can say that once in a while when the issue is not you. But if it keeps happening to you over and over and over, the common element in all your dating dilemmas is yeah. you. Yeah. So and if it, it keeps happening to you, you can't say, well, who cares? I'll just move on. You have to care because you might be doing something that violates someone else's emotional needs and you don't know. Or turning someone off. I agree, Frank. Right. I agree. That's actually one of the specific reasons we, if you are able to give feedback yeah criticism that, during uh, speed dating that that's something a, a feature i love about your speed dating company is that you're in, you encourage people to give anonymous feedback that's correct not criticism it's constructive criticism yes. right it's like how you somebody came off how what they could have done differently exactly. things like that and we do you know sometimes in the dating world you kind of need to hear you that to if you if you're having difficulty in that area a couple of texts uh, as a guy i'd much rather be told my breath stinks or whatever the case might be at least i should have better luck with the next one and that's what exactly. you're saying right you could fix that so if somebody says to you look your breath really bothered me which i don't i can't see myself ever being able to say that out loud to somebody as the reason why <laughs> 
But I did speak to somebody who that was their reason. Um, I can see, you know, yes, I'd, I'd rather be told that. And I could, that's something you could do something about. Exactly. Like for that friend with the breath stinks, she could probably, or he probably could have went on the second date and gave cues about the breath. Here's do a you mint. want to come? Do you want like, and keep repeating it. If that person didn't clue in, you, then okay. So you would you call it skirt quits. the issue more. Or yeah. you, I got a I got a little story it's here. Cues. Here's how you can find out how to let the person know. Hey, uh, hypothetically speaking, if you were talking to someone and the person had bad breath, how would you want to be? Uh, how would you communicate it? And whatever the person says. That's what. That's immediately what you do next. <laughs> you say, uh, by the way. <laughs> so if the person says, well, I wouldn't say they have bad breath, but I would offer them a piece of gum. Really? <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Would Here's you like a piece, piece of gum? gum. <laughs> okay, that's a there way to go. do it. Uh, another texter writes, uh, men tend to do it if they don't get sex. They ghost. So if they don't get sex after that great first date, they might ghost you. Do you find that that's true? Uh, if all he was looking for was sex or if he is a very sexual person and worries that he's dating someone that's sexually incompatible, mm-hmm. he may ghost. Man, finding that out on the first date, that's like crazy. People have right sex there. on a first date. People I'm not have saying sex. you can't have sex on the first date. I'm just saying like if that's what you're basing it on. Let's say somebody is a very touchy-feely type of person and they go on a date with someone who does not even hold hands on a first date. That sounds like they may be a sexually incompatible couple. Okay. That sounds. I think that's a very big leap to we from, don't want from hands affection to, to sex. sex. If somebody's yeah, not comfortable yeah, with physical if, with holding hands, let's say, um, let's say you reach. Well, not out, on the first date. Frank. I see where you're coming from, Frank. But maybe I not on a first date. You don't hold hands on a first date if things are going well. Yeah, if you like, but if, if let's say because this happened to me, I remember way you know, way back. It was a big turnoff. A just first date with somebody, didn't know, it was like a blind date, you know, like somebody fixed up. And then right away, he's like, wants to hold my hand. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, this is not like, I don't even, I barely know you. Don't hold my hand. Okay, so That's in that case. weird, you Well, know? no, it's weird for you because it's not But I'm a touchy-feely pace. person. Exactly, but for a person who is touchy-feely, having someone hold your hand on a first date, that creates even more chemistry. That sparks something that says, oh, this person enjoys physical contact as much as I do. Uh, no, I enjoy <laughs> physical contact too, just not with that person. Exactly. It was like, no, that would have been a complete misread of who I was. Yes. Absolutely. No, that wouldn't have said anything about me per se. Um, I have no desire for drama and a conversation to satiate someone's curiosity about why I didn't feel it. The conversation matters when you care about the person. Feedback doesn't matter because it is subjective. What I didn't like about someone may be what someone else loves about them. That's a very good point, too. And you can say that. You can say that to the person. You can literally just that's why they invented the excuse. It's not you. It's me. Yeah. You can actually use it, and it's still better than not responding at all. So for you, all. it's better than not responding at all. I'm just wondering if people would prefer to hear, look, just, you know, it wasn't right. I, I, I think people don't want to get into that conversation. One of our texters said that, right? I don't want to get into that conversation. I don't want to have to, I don't want to, have to be asked, like, tell me, what, why, what did I do wrong? What, what happened, you know? What if it was you that's being ghosted? Would you like to know? If you keep Look, doing it over and over what? again. You I'm know what? I'm not sure. If, if I kept being ghosted over and over again, maybe I would say, like, what's going on here? Every mm-hmm. every I, I can't get past the first date. That would be a problem that I'd say, what am I doing? But if somebody ghosted me, I you know what? It's like, yeah, I'd question. It's like, oh, that's weird. Like, it, it seemed to go really well. And then... Look, in the Move end, on. if someone ghosts you, you probably dodged a bullet and you didn't know it. All right. So be grateful because you never know. And some of the reasons I had there were really, they seem out of this world, but they're based on true stories. Okay, well, Give me one. Okay. Um, one woman who would regularly ghost men. She had a sexually transmitted disease, a very serious one. Okay. She was afraid to tell anybody, but she was still craving some uh, you know, tenderness. She still was craving some kind of affection. She would go out on dates. She would go out to bars. She'd make out with a bunch of guys. But whenever the guy tried to take it to a second date, she would just disappear because she didn't want to transmit anything to him. She didn't want to even be put in a position where she would be tempted. 
or or she, where she would have to say something or she would have to say look um if we do this you know you we're going to have to wear protection because right um and that's one of the reasons that she would ghost people because she didn't want to give anybody. See, a... sometimes you, and that's why I found the article super interesting because they, it was based on real people's stories. Yes. Yes. And also, it was there's so many reasons there that you would never think of, right? So that you, there's, you know, there's so much variation as to why people do what they do. So rather than always take it personally, like you did something wrong, mm-hmm. assume the opposite. Assume that that there may be something. For them, like it doesn't mean you actually necessarily did something wrong. It could be, but. Okay, look, there's two groups of reasons. Group number one, you did something wrong. Group number two, it has nothing to do with you. Like that person's ex came back into the picture. Yeah, right. It has True nothing too. to do with you. In coaching, we assume the problem is you because unless we take that assumption, we're not going to find out what's wrong. Well, we don't do the work. Right. Exactly. Right. You can't blame everybody else but you either. Exactly. But again, we're looking at patterns, right? So uh, we'll find out more about why you have done some ghosting and whether you would prefer to be ghosted or told why uh, they don't want to pursue anything with you. Love to hear your thoughts. The following program contains mature subject matter. Listener discretion is advised. Your relationships on the line. Connect with Dr. Lori now. 514-790-0800. Passion. News Talk Radio. CJAD 800. Dating dilemmas tonight on the program. Uh, Frank Carmen of franktalks.com. Dating coach is in studio. Fritz Gerald Morisot, founder and president of Elite Speed Dating as well. Tonight, the topic is focused on the, the why. Why do people... Um, ghost which is just basically disappear but mostly we're i think we're interested in in like if a date goes really well and you think you you've connected and everything seems great w- like why would a person just never contact you again like you would assume that and they tell you sometimes oh sure we're going to get together again and then and then nothing they ignore your calls they ignore your texts and they just kind of disappear and we want to know from you like First of all, if you've done that, what were your reasons for it? And and why choose that approach over the approach, uh, maybe the, maybe now we call it the old fashioned approach. I don't know, but the, of just telling somebody, look, it, I'm just not interested or telling them why you're not interested. Would you rather hear that or would you rather just the person, you know, let you go so we talked about one example of somebody with bad breath and the person wasn't able to let the person know that that's what was turning them off and they were just too embarrassed to to say that or didn't want to hurt their feelings so they just never you know got together again i would even say that you don't even have to have a conversation there's texting now not that i'm saying it's the appropriate way of doing it well it's one way it's one way Uh in today's world in today's world don't call I'm just, yeah, just, just, just saying, okay? <laughs> I'll go one step further here and say that a lot of people will initially respond, I'd rather someone be honest with me. Okay, let's be honest then. How do you react when people are honest with you? Mm-hmm. Can you handle honesty? Most people want to know the truth. It's not just honesty. Can you handle criticism? Can you handle criticism? Can you handle the honesty? Not everybody can handle a truthful feedback. Mm -hmm. And this is something that when I go into coaching with somebody, I let them know, I'm not here to hold back. If I think you're messing up, I'm going to tell you because that's what you're paying me for. And if I think you're making a horrible mistake, I'm going to tell you that's what you're paying me for. You're not paying for me to be nice to you. You're paying me so that I will give you an honest account of how you're coming across. And I got to tell you, not everybody likes that. Not everybody wants to hear, oh, I am pushing people away. Not everybody wants to take accountability for their behavior. It's hard to hear sometimes, like what you're doing that may be pushing people away, or why you may not, um, why you may not be having any luck, or what have you. So, a couple of texts here. Why? Perhaps she's psycho. Yeah, or perhaps she thinks you're a psycho. I don't know. It could be. <laughs> it could go either way. Uh, text writes. Usually, men do it because they don't want to hurt the woman, and I would say women do it for the same reason because they don't want to hurt exactly. anybody's feelings. Let's separate the action from the intention. The intention may be a noble one. I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. That's your intention. But by not being honest with them, 
they're, as Fritz mentioned earlier, their feelings are going to get hurt anyway. It'll just be hurt in a different way. Plus, you've gotten into the habit of avoiding difficult conversations. Exactly. And yeah, that's, that's the true. habit that sticks with you. Now, what happens when at some point down the road, you need to have a difficult conversation? And not just in the dating world, not even in relationships, in family relationships, work situations, um, dealing, trying to make decisions about your own career. You got to be able to handle difficult conversations. Yeah, I, I, I'm all, ghost all the time. I'm, I'm with you on that. I think it's important that we learn to not avoid difficult conversations and it's a, it's part of life. It really is. Another texter. Yes, people should grow a pair. Um, another one says have enough respect to tell the person she has bad breath so that it could be a sign of respect. And then this texter writes, I had two friends whom I have since disowned. All they did was go on dates with people only once, then never contact again. They used to laugh thinking this is a joke. I was disgusted with their behavior that I just cut them out of my circle. And that does happen sometimes. It's uh, one of the examples I gave you were part of a bet. They went out with you trying to lead you on as part of some bets, part of some uh, game. game. Uh, well, uh, how, you know, when a person was really into me and, and look, it's very cruel, but this is one of the things that happens out there. But what do you, what does the person gain? So they were into them. Okay. And then what? Okay. Two people Power. make a bet. Let's yeah. Two people make a bet. Let's go out on dates and we'll see how many people we could get attached to us that want us to want to date us again. It's just looking to hurt other people. It's, it's a sense of being in control of a situation that most people who, you know, and again, we want to get into the psychology of it, Lori. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're dealing with someone who inflicts pain on others, they usually have a lot of deep pain themselves that they're trying to infect. Hurt people, hurt people. <laughs> let's just go yes. with that, right? Okay. Hurt people, hurt people. Uh, let's see. The times I've been ghosted, it's usually because the woman is dating me and a bunch of other guys at the same time. Then she usually picks one and the rest of us are discarded. The power of being a woman on a dating site. I'm sure that's one of the reasons you posted. The fact is the person has a lot of other options and they don't feel the need to respond back to each other person. Um, But look, that changes too because when your status changes as you get older, as you become more wealthy, as you become more powerful, the more status you have, you'll be in that position where you have an abundance of choice. Everything's in balance. Nothing lasts forever the way it is. So there's a switch. Oh, there's actually, a... there there was a, a question that we got exactly about that. Is there a dating power flip at age thirty? Maybe you can explain what that power flip means. Okay, we're talking about the sexual attention paradigm. In the sexual attention paradigm, especially when we're dealing with young adults in their twenties, men generally are on the projecting end of sexual attention. Women are on the receiving end. As a generation gets older, women are receiving less sexual attention as they get older. And at at some point, it switches, where an older man who we assume has used uh, many years of his life to accumulate wealth, accumulate status, he becomes the one who's more sought after. And as women get older, they're not getting as much attention. And now, if they want to compete to go out there and meet a man, they have to be more proactive. In the article that I'm writing at the moment, one of the questions I ask is, did Mother Nature plan this when it came to sexual drives? Mm. Mm. Men hit their sexual peaks in their early 20s. That's when men are facing the most competition trying to date women in their same age group. There's more men at that point. For every 100 women, there's 125 men. So at that age group, men are out there and they have to compete. So they have that sexual drive, their sexual peak. Women get their sexual peak in their 40s. And I've always been fascinated by that dynamic. But you know it's not a physical peak at 40. It's not a physical, it's a psychological peak, sexual peak. Right. But what is part of that drive? And I think that part of that drive is now she is on the side where she has to fight. She's got more competition to get the attention of men within her age group. Because the older men are not only being sought after by women their own age, but by younger women as well. But women who are, uh, who feel that they're at their that their peak are actually seeking out. They they feel more enough control over their own sexuality. That's what makes them peak. That they are less shy about going after what they want, actually, and less shy about demanding things that they want. That's what 
often makes that imbalance. At I, least in, I definitely in think peak. there's a part of it. I, I just yeah. think that there's, I think there's something about the amount of competition that exists at that point to get sexual attention. Yeah, there's something there's something there because yeah. I think it's been around for forever. Like, yeah. I don't think that has changed in generations upon generations. Exactly. Absolutely As we're talking true. about generations, I do think that ghosting is a generational, a generational thing? thing. Yeah. Well, maybe we called it something else. I don't know. You know. Well, it's just easier to do today. I think much, that's much the difference. Easier. Much easier to do. Uh, we'll take more of your text. Uh, ghosting, why do you do it? And do you ever wonder why somebody ghosted you? And any other questions you have about dating here on Dating Dilemmas on Passion. Straight talk that's all inclusive. Passion with Dr. Lori. News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Dating Dilemma tonight on the program. I'm always joined by Frank Kermit and Fritz Gerald of EliteSpeedDating.com. So talking about why people ghost, why people just disappear, and other questions that you have. Uh, so here's a couple of texts. You forgot many older women also seek and get sought after by younger men. I know many of these types of couples who work very well. Not every woman needs to compete for the older men. That, I see that more and more now. Oh, absolutely. It's for the women who want to date men in her own age group. And depending on the age gap, um, women won't have any problem attracting a younger man if uh, she's looking for a sexual relationship. She may struggle, though, if she's dating a much younger man, if she wants an ongoing serious commitment. I'm not saying that it's impossible. Right, because I've saying. seen these also work out in serious relationships. Right. But in yeah. that scenario, who ghosts who? The older women ghosts the younger men, or the younger men ghosts the older women. I don't. I don't, I don't think there's an age for ghosting. Oh, there's no, no. Frankly, everybody. Just I know. Goes. I know. Fifty five year old women who were dating and ghosted men too. You know, just <laughs> as much as they may have been ghosted too. But all I know is when I look around me and I have these conversations with people who are dating, the fr- it's the frustration. I uh-huh. hear it all the time. I and and I hear them ask the question. I don't get it. I don't understand. What do you think happened? You know, I can't figure this out. Like, this is a common occurrence. It's just a common occurrence. Mm -hmm. So I started to kind of question it and went to Frank and said, well, what are you hearing? And so he, you know, wrote a great article about all of the the possible reasons that people have given him for uh, for doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, people go speed dating. We actually ask them to, or I request or give the instruction, you only check yes if you actually want to go on a date. Do not check yes if it's a maybe, if it's a this or if it's a that. And maybe that's just specific to um, elite speed dating. I don't know about the other companies, Mm -hmm. but the whole idea is don't say yes and then get the email and And, not not answer back. Right. Then why did you say yes in the first place? So be prepared to follow through. But otherwise that tells me somebody's fearful, you know, that there's other kinds of things you know, going on, but also with elite speed date, like when people do your speed dating events, they, they're they encouraged to give feedback, which I think, it, and, and anonymously, so that actually takes away this whole thing that people were talking about. Well, I don't want to create drama. I don't want to mm-hmm. confront. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So it's constructive criticism and it's probably really helpful. It's very helpful. The amount of people that actually took the time to read the comments, you saw a... Um, an improvement, and in, in some cases, a drastic improvement on their previous speed datings that they had. Interesting. And the following ones, as they were reading comments. I always like to refer to um, to this one gentleman that I've known, and we've had several, because but his case was really severe, I should say. Okay. He, would, he originally came to speed dating in shorts and a t-shirt, mm-hmm. got the, co- the, the feedbacks, he came about six times and keep just kept reading the feedback, the anonymous feedback, and he was getting completely destroyed. Took that, understood the feedback, and by the sixth or seventh speed dating event, not only was he getting dates, but he was getting dates with the women that were ranking, quote unquote, mm-hmm. ranking the highest out of everyone. So knowing it helps... It helps knowing what you um, project when you go on a date. It right. does help. Well, this is, of course, this is Frank's 
job. I mean, this is what he does. This is, and I'm sure you you can sense when somebody needs a little coaching yes. <laughs> along the way. This is kind of a, a small little coaching, right? Giving them the, the feedback that other people have, but uh, very important because you can speed up that process by working, also working with a, a specific, working with a coach on these specific issues. Exactly. When we go through it, we just assume that, okay, if it has nothing to do with you, there's nothing for you to learn. But let's figure out, using an emotional needs analysis, which is the tool that I use, to figure out, are you potentially doing something that's pushing people away and you're not aware of? Because most people, especially if they want to connect, their goal is to connect and not push people away. Right. But they may inadvertently be pushing people away, not know, and that's what we tackle. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, a couple of texts here. Hey, guys, recently ghosted my first ever girl. I went out with her on a Tuesday, but the next day I had a date with the most amazing girl. I felt going out with her again since I liked the other one so much, and I guess I was too big a coward to tell her. So this is typical, too. You have a, a, a Tuesday date. That went well, but Wednesday's date was phenomenal. You're not going to go back to Tuesday's date. Why? Okay. But then again, uh, and, and this is where the coach comes in. Uh, you've already made a commitment to the second girl uh, based on one date. Why not continue to date both? Because that really great first date in about three weeks from now might turn out to be someone who's completely wrong for you. And the one that you didn't, that you liked, just not as much, might be a great compatible partner for you. Continue dating both until a commitment is earned. What you just did there is that you got into, you entered the mindset of, I'm committing to this person based on one date. That well, not then there's the... no commitment necessarily. But He gave I, up but, dating but someone else. That's a what? commitment. I got to tell you something though. Personally, when I was in the in dating, I couldn't date more than one person at a time. I could just couldn't do it. It was one person. I'll date you for. Uh, I'll go on a few dates to see if it goes somewhere. If that doesn't go well, it'll be the ne you know then the next one. I couldn't. I couldn't simultaneously do more than one. Maybe my schedule certainly couldn't handle it. But it wasn't something that. I was prepared to do. Uh, did Fritz do an event at Cafe République on Peel in 2005? I met my best friend there. Could you even remember when you no, did it? No, I can't. <laughs> that was a long time, time ago. ago. I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of... Um, 2005? Yeah. I was in law school back oh, then. Oh, there you go. So it wasn't you. <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, but lots of connections made nonetheless. Yes. All right. Uh, we've come to the end of the program. But Frank, if people want to read that article, where do they go? Because that's where they can get certainly more information about this. Thesuburban.com. It was actually submitted to the Suburban newspaper. They put it up on their website, thesuburban.com. And if you want to reach me, franktalks.com. All right, Sign or on up Facebook. For also, on Facebook, Facebook and, and all of that. So you can check it out there. But very good article. So thank you very much for that. And Fritz, where can people join you? They can reach us at www.elitespeeddating.com. We have events coming up. And let's not forget, we also have that free event coming up. So please oh. check out the website. And sign up. It costs and nothing up. to sign yes, up. That's it costs absolutely nothing. Don't just check out the website. That's sign it. up. Sign up. <laughs> it's free. Sign yeah. up. Uh, thank you all. If you want to reach me, drlaurie.com, D R L A U R I E.com, especially if you're looking for uh, some therapy or consultation or marriage counseling. I do do all of that, by the way. People do ask me, and I always forget to mention that, but you can reach me there and. Uh, let me know if that's something that interests you or you have any questions about that. Uh, thanks to Dave Simon in Master Control. Thanks to all of you for contributing to the program. Great text tonight. Really happy. Uh, coming up next, it is the Comedy Show with Joey Elias. We'll talk to you again uh, tomorrow night when we do our legal night, uh, Sex and the Law, tomorrow with the Metro Linda Hammerschmidt. Meantime, have a great rest of the evening and remember to live your life with passion. Need help with love, sex, dating, or relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best-selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at franktalks.com. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationships? Visit FrankTalks.com If you need help with your relationships My buddy Frank 
some tips Just go to franktalks.com His advice is better than your mom's He knows what you're going through Cause Frank has been there too So log on to franktalks.com franktalks.com Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the Adult Male Virgin Seminars and Telephone Consultations. If you are an adult and want to get a handle on this once and for all, you need this seminar. Being an adult male virgin can be most stigmatizing in today's society. You feel like a failure in the eyes of the mass culture around you, alienated from your male friends who all talk about their sexual conquests, and you must hide this shameful secret lest they use it against you. And the very personal pain, anguish, and despair that cannot be described by words that haunts you every moment of your life. Enough is enough. It is time for male virgins to take charge of their sex lives. Frank gives you the rules of winning in this seminar, the Adult Male Virgin Seminars and Telephone Consultations. Make your first time the best time of her life. Only available at franktalks.com. Frank helps adult boys turn into men.